Hello, and welcome this May 7th, 2022. It is a Saturday, and so you know what that means. It's another episode of Misfits of the Galaxy, my vlog series where I ramble and amble about uh, a campaign setting I hope to run for my fellow members of the Isle of Misfit Rolls podcast. If you haven't heard of us before, I will put links down below uh, to our podcast as well as our Twitch live stream as we have now transitioned over to doing a uh, Twitch live stream every Tuesday about 8.30, 9 o'clock uh, Eastern Standard Time. PM, of course, uh, all the way to about 11, 11.30 PM Eastern Standard Time. If you want to check us out, we'd greatly appreciate it. It's a, Our uh, content can be digested in a whole bunch of different uh, formats now. Additionally, uh, Jake, uh, one of our players, does a wonderful job of recaps. So in many ways, you could probably jump right into Season 2 if you really felt like it, and then maybe go back to Season 1 if you really like our content. Anyways, enough of that. This is the 19th episode of Misfits of the Galaxy. I put I started this as almost a uh, New Year's resolution, believe it or not. Wanted to start. I realized that our DM, Mike with his second season was probably going to conclude our Isle of Misfit rules game. And we kind of got to figure out, well, what are we going to do next? So I kind of put this together with the intention of slowly putting content for when the unfortunate eventual end to our campaign comes so that once that conclusion comes around, we have something we can jump right into. <laughs> with that said, um, I'm, Gonna probably probably try to do something special for the twentieth episode. I still haven't figured it out yet. I think I might try to have a guest on one of the the, the players of the Isle Misfit Rolls who who I've invited to start digesting this content in hopes that they have it can be a, like a kind of Q and A session where they can ask me a bunch of questions about the setting and hopefully I can answer it or in some cases I'll go. I don't know. Maybe I gotta come up with something on the fly. Maybe I gotta write this down and kind of come up with it for a following episode. Who knows? Anyways, this episode I've decided I want to talk about one of the more sinister forces of the universe. Definitely a bad guy. Uh, I know that in recent uh, in the recent months there have been there's been this. Uh, discussion in the D&D community about whether or not we should uh, like have evil stereotypes whether races are inherent like some races and monsters are inherently evil and why are some of them are inherently good honestly if you want to play like a, a lawful good uh, drow paladin of Corel Larathian or whatever more power to you I don't mind but when it comes to any D&D campaign, you need to have that bad guy. Whether or not it is a, a entire species, or whether it is just a culture, or a kingdom, or just some guild, you need that you need something for the players to crash to butt heads with and crash up against and hopefully become victorious in the end. And in a in a galaxy in the in Mistress of the Galaxy in the verse, there are lots of uh, sinister uh, people. There are lots of bad people. There are lots of good people, and then there are things from beyond, which uh, with alien-like intelligence, uh, which are considered to be very malevolent. Like, considered to be malevolent forces in the verse at large. And one of these are the Rothian. The Rothian are a boogeyman like uh, monster in the uh, in the verse, slowly creeping its way out from the darkness beyond the cluster of stars that uh, make up the galaxy. Uh, they have attacked many colony and settler worlds along the edge. When, and each time they do, the entire uh, uh, the entire colony is it vanishes overnight. Not a single person is left behind. 
and only recently has uh, the existence of the Rothian come to light as, uh, is, as they make their way deeper and deeper into the galaxy at large and are finally meeting uh, some sort of uh, military-backed resistance against uh, their threat. As I said, the Rothian are a very malevolent force. Uh, unlike uh, other other aberrations, which is what the Rothian are, like the Illithids, these are not creatures that can be negotiated with at all. Uh, like a, a Mind Flayer, might, you might be able to negotiate with a Mind Flayer, although in the end they'll probably stab you in the back. The Rothian, there is no negotiation. They have refused any attempts to communicate with them whatsoever they just simply move so their their hive ships and their in their fleet just slowly make their way into the are slowly making their way further and further into the the, the galaxy at large like a swarm of locusts descending upon a one world after another stripping it of all sentient life the Rothian themselves are a uh, a very strange species, to the very, very least, standing about lithe, standing about uh, two meters tall. Their their bodies are covered in uh, uh, chitinous carpes, and, and their body and their 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 frames are balanced by a long, sinuous tail. Their fingers end in in razor sharp dagger like claws or talons. Their their mouths are filled with serrated teeth, and uh, their he- atop their heads, uh, their heads are uh, almost in the shape of a, like a hammerhead shark with the two long eye stalks on either side uh, that that can be m- manipulated somewhat allowing them to get, uh, in many instances, to have 360-degree vision. They don't speak. Uh, no one's really seen them eat, aside from the tear into uh, the flesh of somebody trying to fight them off with their claws and teeth. They seem more interested in capturing their prey alive and bringing them back to their hive ships, uh, these black chitinous vessels that, um, or chitinous vessels, tier, clearly partially organic and partly partially technological, just like the Rothian themselves. They, um, those who are brought into their vessels are never seen again. It's hard to distinguish one Rothian from another. They almost look identical, although some of their number are slightly larger, sometimes standing. Uh, standing a foot or two taller than the rest, and the others seem to give them a, uh, yeah, like give them a, a basic reverence. They, they, or behave as if they are their their leaders. As I said, the Rothian don't speak. All attempts to negotiate with them have failed. But they, ha- the one thing that has been discovered by those that have survived uh, battling them is that they are uh, psychic and telepathic as uh, they they attempt to uh, their, their alien minds attempt to reach out and worm their way into uh, the minds of those that they fight as and they attempt to use their psionic abilities to uh, to to cause paralysis in their victims in hopes of retrieving them without a fight uh, and bringing them back to their hive ships. Those that have survived such an encounter uh, have described the horrific um, alien and mal- alien malevolent mind being and how invasive uh, the Brothians attempt to uh, uh, use its psychic, telepathic psychic powers upon them was uh, the the little bit of I guess you'd call it words or speaking that the Rothian does in their minds is like nails scraping across the chalkboard and it's just 
a sense of pure, like I said, malevolent force is the best description. It's just, they are evil. They are very evil. There's nothing more to it. Uh, the Rothian don't fear death. They uh, they will attack a a world with wild abandon, count, and allowing countless no of their numbers to uh, fall in battle. They will only withdraw when they realize that the resources that they are expending uh, are are costing them more than um, than what they would gain. That is the only time that they do withdraw from battle. And it's a cold and calculated decision. Uh, as I said before, those that are taken by the Brothian are never seen again. They're brought onto those hive ships. And to, I don't want to spoil what happens to people on the Brothian hive fleets, to be honest. Because I feel that they might be a very good villain for the campaign. And having that reveal happen in-game, and just having the player's reaction to it, might be incredibly worthwhile. So I'll leave it at that. Uh, needless to say, it, if I find myself in a situation where I'm not going to use Arothian as a uh, direct villain for much of the campaign... I might, in a later episode, reveal what happens on the Rothian High Fleets to people who are taken. Uh, but as I said, needless to say, it's not good. The reason why the Rothian all look alike is because the Rothian are not born, but rather they are created. Uh, the Rothian High Fleets are, have what are called creation engines on board of them, that they effectively are creating clones of a template. The template is tweaked every so often and altered in small ways, but the reality is each Rothian is a duplicate of one another. There can be some minor mutations and variants in them, but for the most part, they're all identical. Uh, the larger ones clearly have been designed specifically to uh, be leaders, as and occasionally they will have one that is a defective model, I guess you'd call it, which uh, is little more than a wild beast that is often thrown at the enemy for uh, as cannon fodder. After all, even a beast has its use to the, uh, the Rothian. Uh, they are all telepathic and share a sort of hive mind mentality. Although, uh, with their, if they do have personalities, they are definitely suppressed uh, by the, high, the, the psionic hive mind they are all a part of. And as I said before, they are from the black, the void. Uh, I won't call it the void, actually. They are from the black, the beyond the edge of the uh, the verse, which is the sort of spiraling star, the galaxy that uh, this is all taking place in. They come from somewhere beyond, just like most apparitions in this uh, this setting. And nobody knows where they originated from. Uh, their behavior, because they are psionic and they're aberrations and they have a hive mind, uh, some scholars have made some comparisons to the Illithid or Mind Flayers. But I guess the best description from another, uh, if you want to take a idea from another cam campaign setting or world or even book, movie or whatever, Tyranids from 40k or... Um, or the Xenomorphs from the Aliens series is the closest description I can get to what these things behave like. Um, they are techno-organic in uh, nature, just like their vessels, so all their weapons and armor are a part of them, are, few, are, are woven into their, um, into their nervous system and the like. Uh, the parsh the the closest thing I uh, the, that they're 
their chitinous carpace that they use as armor. The closest comparison I've been able to come up with is the Parshendi of the Stormlight Archives uh, by Brandon Sanderson, where it quite literally grows on them, sort of deal. And while it can be removed, it, it that's posthumously, that's after death, and it has to be cut away from them, sort of deal. Same with their weapons. Um, Many of their weapons are uh, are psionic, or produce psionic or necrotic damage. As uh, the species is it either wants to kill you outright, or it wants to incapacitate you and take you back to their fleet. Um, so they are, as I said before, they are boogeymen. They are horrific. They are very alien in their mindset. Um, the question that some people out there might have is, can I play one? Well, believe it or not, yes. Yes, you can. Um, and the way it happens is, for every world they attack, they occasionally get repelled. The Rothian. And some of their number might be left for dead. Or perhaps it's the one... Uh, the one that happened to survive as the uh, the fleet withdrew, or maybe it's just an effect uh, one of the failures, as I described earlier. But rather than being uh, a creature uh, that with bestial instincts, it uh, it finds itself less connected to the hive mind itself. In each of these cases, uh, separated from the hive mind, uh, the Rothian develops its own individual personality, which uh, might behave counter to that, uh, c counter to the th thoughts, goals, and ideas uh, and of the high, of the high fleet itself. Um, being separated from it for such a long time. These uh, these entities are considered to be anathema by the fleet, and if they're, dete if they're detected, uh, the fleet will kill them, just like... Th they won't try to retreat, bring them back to the fleet, they'll just kill them outright. Uh, additionally, uh, because you can't trust a Rothian, uh, if they are discovered by the people in the verse at large, despite their best efforts maybe to in, to educate them that, hey, I'm not like those other douchebags over there. They're very likely to be shot, stabbed, or incinerated on sight. So to play a Rothian in a campaign is to play something that is considered to be an enemy of all, all life per se, right? Even if uh, e even if you have a truly altruistic character in mind. So just buyer beware in that sort of situation. If you want to play one, you can, but it's something that you know, that will need to be discussed with your DM. This is... The Rothians themselves are from the, um, the Dark Matter campaign setting created by uh, Mage Hand Press also known as the Middle Finger of Vecna, or formerly known as the Middle Finger of Vecna. I'll put links to their content down below. This is in no way. This uh, series is no way sponsored by them, as I've said before. But I sure as heck love their material, and uh, I think that they need to be indoor, like they need to be promoted a bit, bit more. Anyways, I think that's everything for today. As I said, I might do a follow-up episode sometime later on, going into the hierarchy, because there is some somewhat of a hierarchy among the Rothians. Maybe describe, go into some more details about their weapons, the, uh, the uh, stats for playing one if you are separated from the fleet, and just that stuff in general. Who knows? But Next week's the 20th episode of this. Um, I want to do something special, as I said before. Um, I'm open for ideas. Hopefully I can put something together. If not, we'll just have another one of the, these sort of uh, regular episodes. 
But till then, I hope that everyone's had fun listening to this, and may your D20s always roll a critical for you. Take care, people. <laughs>